present. And for the next decade, America's Olympic Network is NBC. These are the World Championships of Gymnastics, and today we'll answer the question, which country has the best team? That is 15-year-old Chelsea Memel. In the news this week for all the wrong reasons, but maybe the right reasons for her. And basically, she received a phone call to join what was left of Team USA after a couple of injuries and a serious illness. One was an Achilles tendon injury to the U.S. national champion, Courtney Kupetz. The other was a knee injury to the transplanted Cuban and a proven veteran, Anya Hatch. And then there was Ashley Postel, a world championship medalist prior to this. She's out with the flu. So it's up to Carly Patterson on the left, Tasha Schweikert on the right, and Chelsea Memel from West Allis, Wisconsin, 15 years of age, to somehow try and get Team USA through this and defend what was a bronze medal performance in the last World Championships. You know, Al, I spoke with Marta Caroli, USA team coordinator, in the tunnel moments before the team marched in, and I asked her how they were dealing with this most recent setback. Her response, I can't believe all that's happened. We're still a team, though, and although there are kids doing events that would not have, we are prepared. We have been reassuring after reassuring after reassuring. We still think that we can win. And you know, Chelsea is already proving herself here in day one of the competition. She posted the second highest all-around score. Today, she's competing in every event for the USA. She's the only one doing this. And that would be in all four rotations. And in each, each team will use three gymnasts and all scores count. So one big mistake and you're done. The United States doesn't need Taryn Humphrey and Holly Weiss until much later. But they are here. They could be warming up in a side gym, but they are here as sort of a sign of unity for Team USA. There they are. And now the recent injury of Anya Hatch is really devastating to Team USA. She was one of the most dominant, if not the most dominant vaulters in the world. Could cost a five-tenths of a point. Now the home crowd loved it. How good was it? It was good. Just about as well as she can do it. The small hop on the landing. But what I like most is she comes out aggressive. She doesn't hold back. Explodes off that horse. Blind landing, so it's hard to stick. She just has that small hop. Just about as well as she can do that ball. She has been a cool customer. And of course, the start value on this vault is only out of a 9.7. A 9.275, and we have seen many, many scores just like that in the low-scoring vault. And there's pressure on in this competition on vault because in the new rules, they're only allowed to do one vault. Carly Patterson next. Tasha Schweikert still to come. It's funny, you know, Schweikert was a last-minute substitute in the Visa American Cup in 2000. She almost won a medal, so she knows how to step in and do the job. Vaulting has been by far the lowest scoring event at these world championships. Same vault we saw from Chelsea Bemmel, the start value again, 9.7. It's consistent, but a big hop in the landing that's going to cost her. And again, what that means is even if Carly Patterson had done this vault, Ball to absolute perfection, she would have only been able to receive a 9.7. And actually, I've seen Carly do this vault much better. She doesn't quite have the rotation she knows she needs. She bends her knees a little bit as she's landing. 9237, not quite as good as Chelsea Memel. There's Tasha's coach, Cassie Rice. To the left, you talk about a team leader. She has it. She brought that team together in the warm-up gym after the first serious injury, gathered the troops together and said, we're not going to let this bring us down. Identical vault that we've seen from the previous two Americans. Just got to stick the landing. Wow. <laughs> she heard you, Tim. Wow. That's mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Schweikert <laughs> from Las Vegas, Nevada. This was a beautiful vault, tremendous power, and zeroes in on that ground, and bang, right there, doesn't move. Ty
Sasha really didn't have the best of days in the first team qualification, but she comes out here very strong. Actually, I'm a little surprised with that. I think that, I think that that was a little bit low. A hug from team coordinator Marta Caroli. You could see Tasha Schweikert's shoulders slump forward when she saw the score, disappointed with a 9.325. So the United States moves on. No big major mistakes. Next up, the Romanians. And in women's gymnastics, they are part of whatever power struggle there is. Back after this. The World Gymnastics Championships are brought to you in part by GEICO. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By TJ Maxx. Everything for fall at savings worth talking about. TJ Maxx. You should go. And by Zocor. Talk to your doctor about Zocor today. Back in Anaheim, California, a look at one of the walking wounded for Team USA, Anya Hatch. Her severe knee injury has her in a cast. Courtney Kupetz, who injured her Achilles tendon, sent home. Ashley Postel had a very bad fever in a case of the flu. Anya is able to walk up and sit in the press box and watch the proceedings. We switch now from the American story to the Romanian one. Andrea Muntianu on the vault. There's Octavian Bellu. He has been the longtime overseer of the Romanian women's gymnastics effort and it's been filled with success they've been the world champions every time since 1991 and they were once again dominant in Sydney Australia in 2000 but you know this is one of the first times that I can remember in a very long time where they are faced with so many new faces so many young athletes who have very little experience here this Andrea is only 14 years of age but if you are the national all-around champion for Romania, you got a pretty big credential right off the bat. The only problem with this vault, you see where her chest position is relative to her legs when she's landing, going to incur a little bit of a deduction. 9.3 for Andrea. This yep. is not their strongest event, the Romanians. They don't have the power that they need to to generate those huge balls. But a number like that is good news for the United States team who put up scores just like that. Yeah, vaulting really is a very low score. I'd be surprised if either the Americans or the Romanians are leading because the other events score so much higher. Same vault as Andrea. This one done with a heck of a lot more power actually over rotates, but those large steps on the landing are costly as well. National champion for Romania on vault. As Elfie said, she explodes off the horse. Now look at her chest position, completely upright when she lands. That's one of the things the judges are looking for. But when you take two steps, you get a number like that. Monica Rosu with a 9.362. Our first look at Spain and their leader, Elena Gomez. In the other competition, the individual all around, she had the best score coming into the finals, which you'll see tonight on NBC at 7 Eastern time. You know, El, she's great on this event. She's the world champion from last year and made history for Spain by becoming the first woman to ever win a medal at the world championships.
Elena Gomez of Spain. There she is with her coach, national team coach, Jesus Carvalho. He said that he came to Anaheim just worried about qualifying for the Olympics. The top 12 teams from these championships have an automatic berth to compete in 2004. They made it easily. Still to come, powerhouse China and the most decorated gymnast in the arena. That would be Svetlana Horkina of Russia. These are the 2003 World Championships, the women's team finals, back after this on NBC. Longines presents the Perfect Ten Moments in Time. Nadia Comaneci's Perfect Ten at the 1976 American Cup has been selected as the most memorable moment in USA gymnastics history. Unique because she, of course, competed for Romania. Online balloting began in February, and over 300,000 votes were cast. Nadia's Perfect Ten at Madison Square Garden in New York City beat out 1984 Olympic champion Mary Lou Retton's gold medal clinching vault by less than 1%. Ironic because the way gymnastics is structured today, we may never see again another perfect 10. And here in the arena at Arrowhead Pond in Anaheim, California, seated next to Tim Daggett's former gold medal partner, Bart Connor, is Nadia Komanich. She stays busy in the sport. <laughs> she sure does. Jin Kang of China. Now, Gomez of Spain put up a score of 9.612, and it looks as though Spain is set to make a mark in this first rotation. But, you know, China is always powerful. Not as powerful on this event. They don't have quite the start values as we'll see from the other countries. That one only out of a 9.6. Chinese team, as we've reported over the years, has just an enormous talent pool from which to draw. And the lucky young women who set themselves apart most times have to leave home, but can lead a life that they would not be able to normally lead. Well, she really doesn't have the power that one needs to bring in a huge score on vaulting. The Chinese national team, they always seem to pick the same exact body type. They like the small, very lean gymnasts. They excel on balance beam. They're super on the uneven bars, but they can't generate the power on floor and vault. Alexandra Chepchenko under the watchful eye of the longtime guider of both the men and the women for the Russian gymnastics program, Leonid Arkayev. He can stare you down. Can you imagine playing poker with him? <laughs> you know, I'll have to say that it was a tad bit disappointing when I saw this young lady mount the podium. I never expected the Russians to put an athlete with so little talent on their team. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow, this is a gigantic, huge, huge error for Russia. One major mistake, and you're just about doomed. And Russia may already be just about doomed. Bond music didn't fit. Yeah, no, uh, you know, it's quite sad. We used to come to world championships and wonder, gee, you know, what Russian gymnasts are going to be out on the floor? You know, I've watched the practices. They're disjointed. There's no discipline amongst the girls. They're talking back to the coaches. It's the, gone. Co the coaches themselves are saying the Americans are disciplined, the Chinese are disciplined, the Romanians, the Russians were not disciplined. They are, they're disgusted, to be honest. And this right here, this routine, it spells disaster for the Russians with three up, three count. You know, Tim, I'm not surprised because in her preliminary score, she only had an 8-1-8-7. That's not even going to get that here. That 
There are so many deductions there, and then she follows it up. Well, forget that. She almost got severely injured there with that, that flip. Yeah, she was so far over-rotated on that first acrobatic element. There's no way that she can recover and make that, that laid-out flip afterwards. This is now one of the lowest scores that I can recall in a major international competition, a 7.575. I can't remember the last time I saw a score like that for a Russian gymnast. So you take into consideration, we just saw Gomez go on the floor exercise. Spain, in one routine, gained more than two points on Russia. Juan Quintian. Oh. Amazing, in a negative way. At first, Russia, and now China. If you're another country, another team in this event right now, you're saying all bets are off, anything is possible. What this three-up, three-count has done, it has provided parity among many other teams that could never have been competitive. Now all it takes is a fall like this from China or Russia, and who knows, any of these teams that are in the top eight could find themselves fighting for a medal. 8.737 and perhaps an injury as well. Some freezing spray, ethyl chloride perhaps to the front knee. You know, Al, that doesn't work, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it burns, but it, it, it just doesn't work. Well, here's the model, actress, and most decorated female gymnast in the arena, Svetlana Horkina. I mean, I don't even know that you can say that there's pressure to keep the Russian team afloat right now. She knows what the game is. This is about, as much as anything, her reputation and her ability to stay viable as, as a medalist and a champion at her age, having been part of this now for a decade. Well, I know Svetlana, and I got to tell you, the emotion she's feeling right now is anger. She is, frankly, very upset at what her teammate has done, taking them out of the hunt for a medal. She is a very, very proud Russian. has different lines than anyone else here. She's so theatrical out there, the eye contact. She's amazing, been in every world championship since 1994. And you're right, Tim, there's so much pride in what she still does. And remember the Russian legacy which created that pride, a pride that led the Russian women to be in tears when they were forced to quote unquote accept silver at the Olympic Games in Sydney. It wasn't a matter of winning silver as it would be for many teams. It was a matter of not winning or losing the gold medal. Pretty but intense you, stuff. It, certainly. You look at this young lady, and it is remarkable that she is able to stay in this condition. She has lots of distractions. She's an actress in a Broadway-like type play in Moscow. She doesn't have the typical gymnastics body. Her longtime coach, Boris Pilkin, who she credits with being her savior, turned a negative into a positive. The long, lean body style, he said that that can make you special, Svetlana. A 9.65, and for the Russians, that's more like it, but last place almost makes you want to look twice. And then look again at seventh place, China. 
Spain, an unlikely leader, followed by Romania and the United States, a team that has to be thinking about the possibilities. Right now, it's a jumbled world, and still any other team could make a major mistake. Next up on the uneven bars, the Romanian women in the World Championships of Gymnastics. Back in Anaheim, California, for more of the World Championships of Gymnastics. This is the team competition, and we have a major chalking operation going on with the Romanians right now on the uneven bars. What's going on? Well, you know, every gymnast, every team likes the bar a little bit different. Some of the athletes are putting a sugar and water or a honey solution on the bars. Some of the athletes like a lot of chalk on the bars. Some of the athletes like no chalk on the bars. And this competition, there is no one-touch warm-up, so a lot of that would have gotten done in the one-touch warm-up. The Romanians, I can't believe how long they've been doing this. The head judge, I'm surprised they didn't tell him, hey, stop, you got to go. To the vault. Patricia Moreno of oh. Spain and another disastrous. You know, the head coach, Jesus Carballo, this is his 18th World Championships as a head coach. He said one of the things that he feared most with this team was their lack of experience in their young team. Now, this begs the question, and we've talked about the fact that you can't get a perfect 10 anymore because the skills required are just too difficult. Are they too difficult for this generation of gymnastics? No, I don't think so. They are very, very difficult, but there are athletes in the world that are capable of pulling them off. Like Elfie said, it is a very young team. They don't have the experience. Alexandra Aremia of Romania. Romania in second after the first rotation. And you know, they could post some fairly decent bar scores. Traditionally, they have not been really strong on this event. Tim and I have both been impressed by how they have upped their difficulty. They look so much better. To put it into perspective a little bit, at the last World Team Championships, oh, and there's a small error right there, that pause. The struggle. Romanian team did not have one athlete make it into the nines. And this is know, unbelievable. Yeah, you know, they have improved. As Elfie said, their angles are a little bit better, but they are not tremendous on the uneven bars. What they needed to do was come out there and rock these sets, two big steps on the landing, that pause. Doesn't this look like it should be the year after the Olympics as opposed to the year before? I think this is one of the first times that I can remember in a long time having to get to know so many new faces, like you said, Al, the year before the Olympics. Usually that takes place the year after the Olympics. You have three years to build your team. Next up, Florica Leonida. Uh, by the way, the score for Aremia, or for Moreno, Patricia Moreno of Spain, was an 8.462. So now Russia has to absorb a score in the sevens. China has to absorb a score in the eights, and so does Spain. That's got to cost them first place here, barring something unforeseen and almost catastrophic. Yeah, that'll knock them out of first place. Balu, the head coach for Romania, very outspoken. He does not like the rule changes. He doesn't like three up, three count. He doesn't like no one-touch warm-up prior to the team finals. Thinks safety-wise, it is not right. This young lady, unquestionably on this team, the best bar worker. worker. Oh, and she's in trouble. Same type of mistake like her teammate. Incredible. That one was much more pronounced. Now, so far, this is not a matter of someone winning the World Team Championship. It's a matter of countries losing the World Team Championship. Yeah, this is this is remarkable. That skill that she missed, she was off on the transition from the low bar to the high bar. But the skill that she actually missed, many athletes learn that the first year they're competing. I mean, you got seven-year-olds that are doing this element. She hit all her big skills, but it's right here. The transition from low bar to high bar, she gets in real close and muscles, muscles that kip up. One of the most basic skills in gymnastics, a value, a kip. She's never missed that before, I can guarantee you. So an 8.987 after a 9.025 from Eremia. 
on the uneven bars. And now the Romanian team in major, major jeopardy. I tell you, that, that bodes well, extremely well for the USA. Romania did not score well on the bars. USA has a very strong team here. So they exit, and the Chinese women on the same apparatus, the uneven bars. Can one team avoid that major mistake? This is NBC Sports coverage of the 2003 World Championships of Gymnastics. Today, the team finals. So far, it has been an unmitigated disaster for more than just Russia, but this is the longtime general of the gymnastic troops from Russia on the men's and the women's side. And he is now looking to one of his longtime foot soldiers, Svetlana Horkina, to salvage something out of what has happened to his team. On the right there, perhaps you saw the, the ad for which Svetlana Horkina is the model for the watch, the sponsor of this World Championships. Very intricate vault here. She has a hard time getting this around. One of the best ones I have it's amazing, seen isn't her it? do. You can watch her in training, and she'll land on all fours. If ten, you ever catch her do one in training. <laughs> ten times in a row. Very intricate, though. She'll do a half turn onto the board, then half turn again onto the horse. One and a half twi twist and gets her feet down. And you know what's amazing to me, Tim? That's one of the highest start values in the meet. It's a 9-9. Nine -nine. Crazy. And every time you see her on the vault, you will remember the day the vault was the wrong height in the Olympic Games in Sydney. And she elected not to vault again. Svetlana Horkina with a 9.475. But the Russians have so much to overcome. Now to China, Fan Ye. And the Chinese team has already put up a very good score here on the uneven bars. You know, they're capable of huge scores. They are by far the best in the world on this event. Again, here at the World Championships, a very young team. Incredibly difficult elements done so well. Beautiful full spin on one arm. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh! Again. Not fair. Another, another huge fall. Five tenths of a point right off the bat on a skill. Well, for most people, I, sh I should say for most people, not a difficult skill, a transition from the low to high bar, but the Chinese athletes, frankly, they are so tiny that going from one bar to the other is one of their greatest challenges. That's a real shame. She scored 9-6-1-2 in the preliminary. The Chinese team had a 9-0-8-7 that they had to keep in the first rotation. Their first score here on the uneven bars was a 9-5-8-7. The prosperity didn't last long. This low score will bring everybody back down to earth, and they're getting set to absorb their second low score of the competition. I had thought that if China was able to hit three clean bar routines and three clean beam routines, they might be the ones to beat. But when you can't grab the bar and keep on swinging, it doesn't happen that way. A 9.025. Now, Lin Lee. I tell you, I saw this girl in training the first day. Somebody came up to me and said, Tim, you got to check her out. She is incredible. She is a trendsetter. She is so far ahead of the rest of the world on this event. A remarkable story. She was actually brought onto the national team, then sent home because they didn't like her body type. But watch these. Look at the full speed. Spins. Right to handstand. And a huge Jaeger. I can't believe it. Un again. But a, a smart cover-up. Another mistake. She had a little bit of a problem with that in, in warm-ups earlier. She was supposed to go past the handstand. She's smiling, but it's not up to the standard that you said, at least from what you've seen. No, well, she's going to get a very good score, but it could have been in the 9-7, possibly close to 9-8 range. Nobody wants it. You know, all these Chinese bar routines are out of a 10-0 start value. It all starts with this 
release skill, a little bit of style, slaps her legs, creates some sound, a little bit of drama, beautiful pack salto transition to the low bar. But now this is where she ran into trouble. Supposed to cast and go past the handstand there, doesn't have enough energy to get over, but as Elfie said, a very quick thinking gymnast covers up, but it's still a deduction. That's a shame. A 9.450 for Lin Lee. Now, one would think this patchwork team of the United States would be susceptible to a major mistake, the likes of which has befallen the other countries. When we come back, Team USA on the uneven bars. Excuse me, ma'am. We are back in Anaheim, California at the World Championships of Gymnastics where some of the best nations in the world have been licking their wounds. For the United States, that came earlier in the week. Now, with the nations of Russia, China, Spain making major mistakes, it is a chance for a team like Ukraine to do well in these World Championships. Let's watch the performance of Irina Krasinska and Tim this is a team that is going to absorb an 8-6 on the uneven bars. But if you can somehow balance that out, now to me it seems with a 9-6 or maybe a high 9-5, you can overcome that. Well, yeah, the way things have been going, every top team, except for the Americans so far, has had a major deduction, a major fall. So like you said, yeah, take an 8-6, maybe grab a 9-6 and another big score and you're right in there. So the score for Ukraine was a 9.562. Today, that's a huge score. Yeah, there's no way if you had asked all the gymnastics experts across the world if they thought that the team finals would have this many mistakes from the top teams, they'd have said no way. Now you turn to Peggy Liddick, the head coach of Team Australia. The transplanted American was so disappointed with the lack of her team's ability to win a medal on home soil in Sydney. But one of the highlights of the Sydney Olympics was Alana Slater. And one of the highlights today in these World Championships was the red-haired Alana Slater. Peggy's goal here at the World Championships was just simply to qualify to the Olympic Games. And they felt a little bit of the pain. Like the Americans, they lost their top all-around gymnast and potential for some much higher scores. Lisa Skinner out with an injury similar to the Americans. Slater the on, that, on that vault got a 9.225. Now we're back to what's at hand for the United States and the story of 15-year-old Chelsea Memel. She certainly made a lot of national news and newspapers across the country because of that last-minute phone call that puts her in the World Championships with her team so much in need because of injury and illness. In a difficult position starting off the team. This is huge pressure. Big release right here. Right on her fingertips. Looks so nice when it's far away like that. Gives the coach a bit of a heart attack. And the great thing about this exercise is Chelsea, unlike all her other events, she has so much variety. Check this out. Oh! Al, this bounce like that. They don't just happen to kids with no experience like this. One of the most difficult dismounts in the world today to stick, especially in a pressure situation. It's all blind. She was aggressive. She was definitive. She opened her body, put her feet down. <laughs> Remember, she was just supposed to be on the sidelines cheering for this team. Tasha Schweikert next to go for the United States. She was part of Team USA in the bronze medal performance in the last World Championships. Memo score. Oh boy, it's huge. 9.637. Tasha, the first day, had a small deduction. She scraped her feet on the ground. Tim, she looked nervous. I think she held back. She wasn't herself on this event. This can be a huge event for Tasha. Well, her coach says that. The one thing Tasha likes better than anything else is a big crowd. She says she loves people watching her. There are a few right now. 
couple of release skills right off the top here is her first one. And then the same release skill that we saw from Chelsea right here. This is great. A little bit close on that first one, caused the second one to be close again. But back on track. fortunate for this team on the odd chance that it comes together so far in your own country. You know, after Tasha missed in the first day in the team competition, she was right back in the practice. Doing drills after drills to assure herself that she wouldn't miss again and wasn't this fabulous. Double layout DLO stick. Right there. Check out this replay. Check out this. <laughs> Bella Caroli next to Mary Lou Retton of all people. <laughs> Two legends in the sport of gymnastics right there. And Tasha hits another home run for the United States. 9.6. What that means for Team USA, they have got two huge bar scores. All of the other countries we have seen major breaks from, they get through cleanly here. They go to the next rotation with a huge advantage. And this young lady went 9-5 in day one. Bella Caroli up and standing. Really, it's his wife, Marta, who's looking over the program, but you know Bella has a say because he always does. Now, there's some confusion here about... Oh, no, she has no number on. Wow. Now, now yeah. what happens? She can't compete without it. Yeah, you, you, well, you can compete. There's an automatic deduction. But certainly the USA does not want to take that deduction. And a, a, There's also a time a issue here. There is a time issue. That one? Yeah. Once the judge and they Look have there, guys. put the go sign up for Holly Weiss, once they put that up, technically the gymnast has only 30 seconds to mount the bar. If they don't, they can get a warning, and then they can be told to go immediately. If they don't, I think they can actually be given a zero, believe it or not. Now, wait a minute. Someone has just taken a Sharpie and written her number on a piece of paper from, Unbelievable. from the press row. Oh, my God. I, you know, I, I don't know if this is legal, to be perfectly honest. I don't think it's... This is crazy. And can I ask the question, what is with the safety pins? <laughs> Can't we use Velcro or something? This, They're going to let her go. Uh, amazing. This... That was way beyond 30 seconds. I tell you, she has got to be a little bit rattled now. And well, and she, she's been nervous on this combination in uh, warm-up. Right here to a release skill. Oh. Now, can she continue? Wow. Now, guys, I know that there are international coaches who complain about events in the United States. You could argue it's sour grapes. You could argue that it's an advantage when teams come to the United States. For a moment, that felt like a huge advantage, that time advantage that they gave Holly Vice, but it hasn't helped out the United States at all. Yeah, it did not help, but actually the head judge has control of that event, and she's an Australian, Kim Goddle. So now, when all things seemed rosy for Team USA, they like just about all the other powerhouses are going to have to absorb and play on with a very low score. The unthinkable. A gymnast arrives at one of the biggest moments of her life without the number she needs to compete. And the lack of that number completely unnerves her. Does it unnerve Team USA? We'll find out. We've reached the halfway mark, yes, and it's time to make sure everybody has their numbers firmly tacked on.
These are the Wild World Championships of 2003. We'll be back after this with the updated standings. Where to begin with the story in Anaheim, California? Falls, major spills, deductions, an American gymnast almost competing without a number, then being given too long to compete with it. Then Holly Weiss given a score of 8.875 after then falling, and that score propels the United States into the lead to China. And Li Ya. And the head coach for China, Lu Xianchen, said he wasn't surprised about China's performance after the first day, but he was very aware of the other team's mistakes, and he said it's going to be much more difficult for his young team because of the pressure, the three up, three count for today's competition. He also said that this young lady is the most consistent gymnast on the team and the toughest mentally. Li Ya received a 9.587, her only rotation so far on the uneven bars. Hey, Al, I got to tell you, you know, we just talked about this whole time thing with Holly Weiss, and I don't know why she's not going. She did a lot of warm-up on the podium, which... Is a no-no. A little bit of a no-no. You can do some stretching, but actually flipping around really shouldn't be doing that up there. China posted oh, wait a minute. What's, what's the difference? I mean, if I'm stretching, maybe that's my kind of warming up. Well, you know. Well, let's see what happens. Acrobatic elements, actually doing gymnastics. Yeah, it's a fine line. I think China impressed the entire audience, the world, other gymnasts with these performances on the beam. They posted some huge scores. Very difficult exercises. They take huge risks throwing her head back in a jump like that, losing sight of the beam. Check this out. Combinations like this you're seeing more and more of. Again, taking risks. They have such a great flow in their routine. Beauty. The rules are so stringent on connections and how specific a oh, yep. little bit of a check. check on that didn't have enough rotation how how specific things have to be done to get credit and certainly the Chinese do things like that Beautiful, so definite eh? there's really no question that they're gonna get all of the bonus that they're looking for on most of the elements beautiful beautiful balance beam. but just little itty bitty uh, balance checks here and there. Not quite the crisp performance that she had in day one. Well, how about this? I mean, after some major mistakes, little itty bitty ones don't seem so bad. Well, see, Al, this is what I was talking about. Yeah, you can stretch and you can move around. But this but, is part of her routine. Yeah, and she's she's really doing this. And at this point right here, I, I'm pretty sure, but I believe they've already got the go sign up What's the point here, Tim? What's well? Did you see the judges make a motion or put a flag up or do anything? They 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 have her name and number, and once they have the score for the other gymnast, the go sign goes up for her, and that means technically, like with Holly Vice, technically she has 30 seconds to mount the beam. If she doesn't, she can receive a warning, and then a possible deduction. It, very rare, though. It doesn't here happen. we go again. Now, Zhang Nan is pretty much doing the same thing. Now, do you think there's a penalty already included in 9487? No, no, that they, they do not take it off of a specific gymnast. It would come off of the team total, but I I don't think I haven't seen anything that leads me to believe that a deduction has been incurred. I tell you though, they are certainly annoying the judges. Nelly Kim, the head judge on balance beam. Maybe not the most patient person I've ever met. Well, try and pick now who you think is going to win. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's a tough one. Looks a lot better for Team USA, though. I tell you, Alec, they are able to do that. After all they have been through, they lost athletes that unquestionably would have been in the top three on events. 
watching this balance beam routine, there are a few little question marks in what she's performing, not quite as exact as she did in day one. Again, the pressure is, is huge, knowing that this has to count. Chinese taking huge risk in their routines. Her coaches say she learns move, moves very, very quickly. Sometimes lacks a little bit of mental toughness, but is considered, at least by head coach Liu, the best all-round gymnast that China has ever produced. She holds on to stick it, and maybe the Chinese women are steadying the ship. After Li Ya's 9.487. Hard to imagine that Zhang Nan was not going to get a number pretty much just like it. And you know what was so impressive about this routine is the huge risk that she takes right off the top. Many athletes in this competition are just not doing mounts of this quality. And a 9.625 on the balance beam for Zhang Nan. They try to get back into the medal picture. Meanwhile, the United States moves on in their third rotation. Coming up for them, the always perilous beam as they try to shake off the troubles that befell Holly Weiss at the end of the second rotation. She's got her number back, and that's a good thing. These are the World Championships of Gymnastics on NBC. Team USA for the women in these World Championships limbering up to go on the beam here. They had the lead after the second rotation, amazingly so, and we say that because of everything that has happened. It's like a flu, and it's not a good one with these women gymnasts. First of all, for Ukraine, a team that looked like they were part of things, Irina Krasinska gets an 8.8 .8 on the balance beam after earlier doing so well on the uneven bars. And you know what's so sad is this was a team very much like the Chinese, very difficult exercises. They take risks. They have great beauty presentation. There's a risky mount once again, but of course, when you do that, sometimes it can result in a fall. Arena Yarotska gets an 8.562, and again, painfully for the Ukraine team, both of those scores have to count. Now, vindication, perhaps, after the numbers fiasco, as Holly Weiss starts off the United States, followed by the 15-year-old fill-in Chelsea Memel and Carly Patterson. And this is a tough bill to fill right here. She was the last gymnast to compete for Team USA. That trauma that she had, and then of course the fall, she's devastated by that. And now she's got to come out right away and do a balance beam routine. And there's a little more waiting involved again. But again, this is just part of the deal sometimes, right? I mean, the judges have things they have to discuss, and you have to take a deep breath no matter how ready you are. Yeah, but not not like this, though. This is not typically when you would have a delay like this. Well, you're right. It's because of what she just went through. Yeah, it, it, and usually what happens is when you get a delay, they are trying to rectify a score. There's been a discrepancy between the judges, but Holly's the first gymnast. The rotation has passed. And it clearly rattled her on the last rotation before her uneven bars routine. And Bella's like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> Kelly Hill goes over one of the American coaches to try and settle her down. We actually just got word that it was a technical problem with no less the timing <laughs> system from the balance beam. And I guess they've got it figured out now. This is a huge routine for Holly. The last time she was up here, she fell. Selective memory, erase the slate. Think how hard it has to be to really try and do that. She's got a lot to erase though, Al. And she's got a huge, difficult combination right here. Flip-flop right into a back with a full. She fell night one. That's Hangs good on night two. Holly's got all the big skills 
And obviously, great flexibility showing that off throughout this entire routine. Takes some great risk right there. Setting up just for the dismount. Last skill. She does a combination. Three elements and ends with a double back. Biggest sigh of relief that Holly Weiss has ever made. Now, Tim, you alluded to it earlier. Marta Caroli apparently gave quite a speech to this team. One of the things apparently that she said was, this is a world for the tough. In other words, saying if you want to be part of it, you've got to be tough. That was pretty tough right there. It certainly was. And she also told the story 1979 when Marta Caroli and Bella Caroli were the head Romanian coaches. They came to Fort Worth, Texas in the United States, and they won their first ever team title over the Soviet Union, and they did it without their star, Nadia Komenich. Nine, five, one, two, and today that's a darn good score. We'll stick with Team USA on the balance beam now. As we all wonder, is it possible that Chelsea Memel can be in her first world championships at the age of 15 with no advance notice and not crack? Not even a little bit. <laughs> and th this is not an easy routine. There is tons going on. Powerful elements, tricks, flexibility. First big skill coming up. Very unique. One of the, the few gymnasts that attempt this element because it is so risky it's a front flip with a half turn she gets some nice bonus points for that combination right there her mom a former gymnast actually a roommate of 1984 olympian kathy johnson they are staying out here with kathy both of her parents and she is staying on the beam again. Rock solid. She is all business. <laughs> nice little signature move. That's different. Very yeah. cool. See that little smirk on her face? She knows there's just one skill left, her dismount. Those coaches, they have all wrapped their arms around what Chelsea Memo represents. Bella, Mary Lou, the head coach, Kelly Hill, Evgeny Marchenko, the assistant coach. They are all, like myself, and I think Elfie as well, just really amazed at how well this young lady is doing under this tremendous pressure. And this felt oh so good. Beautiful height. Look at that. Bang. Someone forgot to tell her she's competing in the world championships. <laughs> and Mary Lou, how about that? And now the way, because you never know. But it draws a smile. 9.575 for Chelsea Memo. So back to back, USA scores in the 9 fives. Chelsea introduces Carly Patterson for us. One of the other athletes on this team, it, it amazes us the concentration, the ability that she has to just zone out. Focus on this four inch wide balance beam and do these type of skills. The thing that's so great about Carly on beam is how she lands. Marta Caroli says she has a lightness 
on the beam that the international judges, they just crave. Had trouble in the first day of the team competition on her dismount. Well, a little bit of a slip there. It cost her a tenth or two. So has chosen to take out her more difficult dismount, playing it safe right here. Good enough to be right there with the other two scores? Well, I think so. She took out this dismount, though, and she loses a handful of bonus for it, but it's going to be a solid score for Carly Patterson. That's not going to hurt Team USA at all. Elfie, what do you think? Well, I think uh, Tim's absolutely right. It's not quite the performance we would expect from Carly, but it is going to be good enough for this team. She still had great difficulty. That's the lowest score of the three, but... Like you said, it's a good score, 9.312. The United States now moves around the arena here in Anaheim, California. Their final rotation will be floor exercise. This has become one of those Team USA, USA, USA moments here now. Harley once told me I like competing in front of big crowds. How's it feel now? As our coverage continues, the Romanian women will be on the beam. We'll also check in with the Australians. It's crazy. It's impossible to figure because some of the big heavy hitters are just out of the picture. This is NBC Sports coverage of the 2003 World Championships of Gymnastics. Now more of the team finals. Log on to NBCSports.com for coverage of the World Gymnastics Championships, including news and features on the top performances. It's all at NBCSports.com. The Romanian women still to come on the beam. This was Alana Slater of the Australian team moments ago. And you know, the Australians faltered in the first day of competition and were hitting in this competition when it counts. And coach Peggy Lydic prepared her team by playing what was called a distraction tape so that this team could get used to the outbursts that we're hearing. Beautiful. Legs together. Flip catch there. Oh, yeah, much different team than we saw on the first day. I tell you, with what has been going on today, who knows? This Australian team that came to these worlds just wanting to qualify for the Olympic Games, placed in the top 12, they could get a medal. It can happen. A 9.587 on that routine by Alana Slater. Now Alexandra Aremia of the Romanian team. What must Octavian Bellu be thinking right now? Well, if he's looking at the scoreboard, he's thinking, my girls better stay on the balance beam or Australia is going to win a silver. And, and I don't think that's going to be a problem for this team because I tell you what, in the practice sessions, they did numbers upon numbers upon numbers, and they hit. And is there an apparatus that has defined the Romanians more over the years than this one? No, they are remarkable in the training. It's called podium training before the meet even begins. These young ladies did so much gymnastics in their allotted time. I, I, I can't even imagine how many acrobatic flipping elements they did. I don't know, maybe 75 might be a high number, but I think they had one fall in all of those elements. You asked about a defining event. I would have to say it's balance beam. This is their history. It's what they're known for. They've got big skills. They're clean. They just, they just get the job done. They make it look so easy. Oh, high 
fives, no hugs. Not right now. That's just what they do, and they do it every day, day in, day out. Here are these popular three skill combinations that we're seeing today at this level. They put their feet down so firmly on the balance beam. Hey, you know what's missing? All those little voices in the background, the teammates coaching along and living the routine every step of the way. Maybe it's there a little bit, but not as much as we've heard it yeah, in the past typically. years. 9.462 for Alexandra Aramia. And now Oana Bon. They are not booing her, they're booing... They're reacting to that score. They think it's a little bit low, and I kind of would agree there. It, very nice exercise. She's got one of the most exciting combination tumbling passes being done in the world. And it's it's not just that it's difficult, it's how she does it. She is tumbling on the beam, punching the beam, really getting some air time, back layout with a full. Super hard. She missed it day one. Wow. <laughs> That's a great skill. She won the silver medal on this event last year at the World Championships. She's one of the only ones on the team that has just a little bit of experience. And one of her coaches said a little bit of personality. Mariana Baton says she's very noticeable in a crowd. She always has that smile. Just her dismount left. She sticks this. This is going to be a great score. Almost. There's a great balance beam routine. There's one of her coaches, Mariana Bitan. And to be honest, I think the Romanians came to Anaheim and they thought that the better team was the USA. But with all of the injuries, I've almost seen a little bit of energy come to this team. And certainly the coaches, they recognize the opportunity. But to be honest, they really have not been delivering today, Al. Alana Bond delivered there with a 9.537. Now, we have the official computer-generated scores. And China has, in fact, had two-tenths of a point deducted for their warm-ups on what is called the podium. So the United States remains in front and powerfully in front over China by almost a full point. Romania trying to hang on for a bronze medal with Australia right behind them. When we come back, Team USA moves to the final apparatus. It's the floor exercise, and historically that is something they've been very good at. The young women who now make up Team USA maybe have a strong memory about the Magnificent Seven from 1996. Probably not. They were just too young. But that was a gold medal of Olympic proportion. In the World Championships, the United States women have never, ever won the all-around gold medal. Right now, they are the leaders with one rotation to come. This is Taryn Humphrey, 17 years of age, and this is the, the moment. She's on this team to do her thing, her specialty on the floor exercise. The United States lead is a little bit more than eight-tenths of a point. That gives them a little room. And you know, remember that Taryn was an alternate, not even supposed to be here. This is an exceptional exercise. She can put up a fairly decent score. It is well choreographed, and she has great tumbling.
remember in this format of competition, not all the athletes compete on all the events. She has been waiting all night for this opportunity. to say that's getting the job done what a wonderful presentation remember this young lady came into this competition as the top alternate to replace any injuries and then she became the secondary alternate thank you al <laughs> Chelsea Memo was put in front of her. And then, of course, the next injury, she gets her shot, and she delivers big time. Excellent. 9.3 for Taryn Humphrey. Remember, the United States had over an 8 tenth lead coming into this final rotation. Now, can Chelsea Memo make it 8 for 8? Four events in the qualifying without a major mistake, and three so far here. save we just saw very crooked on the takeoff but like everything this young lady has done since day one she makes it work Ben. Her mom and dad were both great gymnasts. They had collegiate scholarships. Can you imagine how they are freaking out <laughs> right now? Her dad said that, yes, she doesn't always take the straightest path. Sometimes she swerves a little bit, goes around an obstacle, but it always just seems to work out for his little girl, Chelsea. You know, some years and some championships and some Olympics, it's about needing a 10 or a 9.9 or a 9.8. That's not what this is about right now. This is about getting through without those major yeah. deductions. 9.3s and 9.4s work for the United States right now. Do you think she's proved herself to Marta Caroli? I think so. The final American who could possibly nail down the first ever and most improbable world championship gold medal. 9-4 for Chelsea Memel. Carly Patterson. Four tumbling passes for a gold medal.
the finale. which has been great. They're chanting. The chanting goes on, but this crowd, due to the nature of gymnastics, they don't know that that has clinched anything for sure. But if they do the right thing, that's just going to make the lead of the United States insurmountable for Romania. You see the Romanian gymnasts waiting in anticipation, just like the Americans, for that final score. Now, Tim, that's Evgeny Marchenko, one of the American coaches. In your day, could you have imagined a Russian coach part of the Team USA effort? That's how the borders are blurred in 2003. The score for Carly Patterson, a 9.525. The United States is into it. Romania is trying to figure out the math and hang on to what they can hang on to. <laughs> Team USA is not a big one for figuring the numbers, what they need to overtake someone or what their opponents need to not catch them. Yet Chelsea Memel is a whiz with numbers. She probably knows that the Romanian women needed a 9-7-4 coming into this final rotation to catch the United States. But the first Romanian woman, Oana Bond, has already put up a 9-3-3-7 meaning catching the United States is a virtual impossibility. The second Romanian woman now, Andrea Mutianu. She may not even know what the plight of her team is, but the United States is on the verge of securing its first ever World Championship team gold medal. who knows what didn't work today and you know just continued not to work for her and her team in that floor exercise it all has convinced Tim Daggett Melvin Schlegel myself it's official the women of Team USA are going to win the gold medal in this team final now, while Montreano was doing that performance this was the reaction among the women including Carly Patterson just moments ago
<laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> Did you hear Chelsea memo? No, no, no. We were way in front. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. That's a very frustrated Romanian coach, Octavian Bellu. They will be back. Here's Anya Hatch. Hug for Tasha Schweiker. Now, what we're told is that Courtney Kuhetz will get a gold medal, but Anya Hatch, because she was injured before any of the competition, and Ashley Postel, who was ill, will not. It seems unfair because they were part of so much of what went into this team, but that's the rule. And so it is official. The women of the United States, right now, here as we are, are the best team in the world after losing half their team to injury and illness. It started early. The gymnasts of Russia and China falling away. And now, Australia is going to get a bronze medal as well. The difference a little bit less than the two-tenths of a point that China was penalized. Down to Andrea Joyce. Chelsea, congratulations. Everything this team had to go through this week, how were you able to put it behind you and pull through with the World Championship? Well, first, we really were hoping that everyone is all right. Then we had to just go back and concentrate on what we were doing. For you personally, you weren't even supposed to compete here. You were thrown in at the last minute. You compete all four events, 15 years old. Are you a little surprised at how well you were able to compete? I was surprised, yes, but I had a lot of confidence coming in. All my, I was hitting my routines in practice, and everything was going really good, so I was real confident. Is this gold medal more special because of everything that's happened? Definitely. We had just so many injuries. Bad luck, but we pulled through. Congratulations. Tasha, all the bad luck. What does it say about the character of this team that you're able to win the gold medal? Oh, wow. All I can say is wow about this team. Uh, this was an amazing team. You know, we had so many curveballs thrown at us, and we're in training, and oh, oh, my gosh, not one more thing can happen. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. But you know what? We got out here. We pulled ourselves together. We said, you know, we have nothing left, and all we have to do is everything to gain. So well, you are the leader of this team. What did you say? You've got more experience than the other girls. What did you say to them to get them ready? You know, and I was like, we've had everything thrown at us. All we can do is go out there. Use this audience, use this crowd to help us get through. Just have fun out here because, you know, I mean, we've been dealt these cards and we played them well. Congratulations. Thank you. And Andrea, one of the bizarre moments that Team USA and Holly Weiss had to overcome was when she almost competed without a number and then had someone scratch one down on a piece of paper. Back down to you we go. Holly, a lot of drama out there for you today. First of all, on the bars, how much did that distract you, not having your number and having that delay? Um, well, I tried not to, like, worry about it too much, but everyone was trying to look through my number, and I wasn't exactly sure where I put it because I took it out of my bag in the back gym, and I guess I just forgot to hand it to my coach to put on. So I tried to concentrate, but I think I was just kind of rushed and didn't take enough time. And then you go over to your next event, over to the beam, and there's another delay, not your fault, but the technical delay. How were you able to hold your composure for that? Um, well, you have to know that all things can happen in a competition like this, and you just have to keep your cool and stay calm and just do the best you can. So I just tried to stay focused on what I was doing. A growing experience, to say the least. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. And so now these young women will celebrate. There's Marta Caroli and Bella Caroli. Their vindication has to be clear because the direction of USA Gymnastics was to put faith in them. And now the gold medal to show for it. When we come back, the medal ceremony and something else that happened in men's gymnastics this week that we have never seen before. The World Gymnastics Championships are brought to you in part by Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate. By 1010-987. No commitment. It's three cents a minute and 39 cents to connect. 1010-987. And by the Hershey Bar. Happiness is pure milk chocolate. Earlier this week in the men's all-around at the 2003 World Championships, Paul Hom had to know with one routine to go, he was one great number away from a World Championship medal. Perhaps 
How could he erase the memories then of what happened in 2001 when in nearly the same circumstance, heading into the sixth rotation with the lead, this is what happened on the high bar. Adding injury to insult, he came so close to the bar, he broke his nose. Now, those years later, here he is in 2003 in a final showdown with Yang Wei of China. Here's how we called it as Yang Wei hit the floor. And he is a tremendous tumbler, super powerful. Going to do a double twisting, double laid out somersault, but that's not the hard thing for him. Oh, <laughs> wow, that was perfect. You know, he has struggled with this pass the entire time he's been here. I did not see him make this one time today. Three acrobatic elements in a row. Oh, Tim, that was a great save. Was way over rotated on that first tumbling element, that two and a half twist, but somehow he just finds the will. He has been second in the all around before in Sydney, Australia. And when you're second, man, you get another shot no way do you want to go home with the silver again and we have watched this chinese team and this individual in particular show a lot more will desire and determination to be on the podium again he has one more piece of gymnastics to state his case world champion or runner-up Big step at the end, but one thing is pretty clear, isn't it now, Tim and Elfie? He's going to force Paul Hom to do something really spectacular. Well, he had the lead, and that is going to get a big number. <laughs> Just depends on how that, big. that seems to say he thinks he's got it done. I tell you, though, he knows that there is only one guy in this building who has a chance to take away what he has wanted for so long, and that's Paul Hammond. Believe me, he has scouted out his competition. He knows that Paul has five major releases, not to just let go of the bar. That's the easy part. He's got to grab it. Score for Yang Wei, a 9.662. While he was recording that score, we were listening in to Coach Stacy Maloney and Paul Hamm Watch the nervous legs, the nervous twitches, and the important words. It'll be right there. Okay. Okay, okay. This is your day. No way Yang Wei is winning. On horizontal ball for Korea. And they got the team goal. We're going to get the all around. Do I say anything? What do I say? Does Paul Hahn want to hear anything? Do the words work? Does he even hear them? Well, one thing's for sure. They have been a team for their entire lives together. Stacy told me something before this championships that if it's true, this man will be wearing a gold medal. He said Paul Hahn never in his career has he taken a step backwards. He needs a 9712. And right now in gymnastics, that means this routine has to look something like a 10 to the average that, person. That is the routine, right? The, the element that he missed at the 2001 World Championships. Four in a row right here. Here he goes. Three. The scoring has been so conservative. I think he's got to stick to even have a chance. Morgan. The reaction here is that they've got it, but this is going to be close. 
really close now. No American man has ever won the all-around. Needs better than a 9.71 to grab this title. And this is in the Olympics and the World Championships. And he's got it! And this is a kid who didn't dream about hitting the winning home run in the World Series. Young Wei can't believe it. This is a kid who, when mom and dad built him a gym in the attic, used to flip around and fly around and fall off the bar and say, this one's for the gold medal. Folks, this is his dream come true. Two flips, two twists. See that ground, get it, get it. Get those feet on the ground and don't move. Stacey Maloney, thousands of hours, <laughs> days, months, and years. <laughs> Paul, congratulations. First U.S. man to win the world all-around title. Can you describe what this moment is like for you? It's incredible. When I finished that high bar team and the crowd just roared, oh, my God, it's the best feeling in the world. It's been a dream of mine since I was a little kid, and it came true. I'm just so excited. You and Yang Wei were back and forth so close throughout this competition. How much tougher did that make it? It was a really, really close competition between the top guys, and it came down to the very last event. So I knew I had to hit that high bar team basically as good as I could in order to win. And I guess I got lucky this time, so world champion. I don't know. It didn't really look like luck. How do you take this success now and capitalize on this as you prepare for the Olympics? Um, hopefully this will give me a lot more confidence going into uh, Athens. And um, I'll feel strong going in there. And I'm just really looking forward to going to the Olympic Games as world champion. It was exciting to watch. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. So for the first time ever after an Olympics or a world championships in the men's all around when all things were said and done we heard the Star Spangled Banner and for the first time in the history of the world championships when all was said and done in the women's team finals we heard the very same song. Chelsea Memel and Carly Patterson were also part of the women's all-around. And that coverage is 7 p.m. Eastern Time tonight on NBC. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2003 Women's Team World Gymnastics Champion.